There we go. All right. Now we have audio. Something changed. Oh, good. Something changed again. What the hell's going on here? Talk. Uh, there. sorry. I was just I was just responding to something on the phone. There we go. Have you noticed that right when we start our show, that's the time when everybody wants your attention? Yep. <laughs> yep. Texts and calls and all these fun things. It's like, no, people, go away. I'm trying to do something. Yep, see what happens. Come on, load it back up again. We've got a stream. We've got video. We got should have audio now. Oh, the bit of audio I'm hearing there, uh, no. playing back at me is pretty quiet. Your voice sounds good. My voice sounds pretty far. Oh, well, let me see. Hang on. The audio I'm hearing uh, playing back at me is pretty quiet. Your voice sounds good. My voice sounds pretty far. Oh, mm -hmm. that sounds better. Let me see. Hang on. There we go. Okay, well, we got audio anyway. I am so tired of these systems that no longer want to cooperate. Oh, for those that, for, for, since we didn't have any audio <coughs> when we were talking about before, we were talking about how uh, the updates are kind of messing up all of our settings, and it's like someone goes into your room, glues your, <laughs> glues your bed to your roof, and rearranges everything because they had to vacuum. Yeah. That's how it feels when they come in and rearrange and, and redo all of your settings. <laughs> You know, and your voice sounds a little far off because it might just be being picked up by my microphone, too. Hmm. That is a very interesting issue. Instead of being fed through the system like it's supposed to. I wonder why that's going on. Like, what's, what settings would you look into? Would it be the app have, settings or would it be the computer settings? I have no idea. Hang on a second. Hang on a second. Be right back. Testing one, two, three. Squirrel. Okay, back. Oh, hey, I heard that. Squirrel. I have no idea. All right, well, it is what it is. We get the recording uh, for the podcasters anyway, because almost nobody comes into the YouTube version, so. Huh, this is interesting. I'm getting feedback that we still aren't being heard. Really? Not we're live in 65 minutes? No, we're live in 3 minutes and 34 seconds. What it is, we get the recording uh, for the podcasters anyway, because almost... That's <laughs> interesting. I wonder why I'm getting that feedback. It's feeding. I have no idea. Who's telling you that? Hey. Uh, your other half. Oh. Your alter ego. Okay, well, I don't know what's Hi, wrong. Hemdian. She may as well check it. Hemdian's, Hemdian's at the show. Let's see if he's hearing us. MD, are you hearing us all right? All right. It's music time anyway. Let's get a rockin'. Sitting doing time. Mm -hmm. Preacher 
nature man discovered Passed down from saint to sage A kind-hearted lover who's been lost on this stage We're missing Texan dancer will move it right along when missing. Down <coughs> <coughs> he and the jigger, the scene who done the crime. Captain pulled the trigger, guess who's doing time? They went missing. Definitely mine. Sacred rules of old When they sing Folks, it be showtime once again with a little bit less fewer glitches in the system this week than we had last week. Oh, dear God, were the glitches just fucking insane. Glitch, glitch, glitch. Still not perfect, but it's on its way. All right. Slowly but surely. It is time. Let's get this show on the road. Off we go. Ladies and gentlemen, it is time for WordPress plugins A to Z, not Z. Hmm. Road tripping with WordPress. It's episode 547, and we have plugins for verifying users, checking links, date dash widget, logging runs, tripping blurb, Collecting maps and classic press options all coming up on WordPress plugins from A to Z. <clears throat> WordPress. It's the most popular content management and website solution on the internet. And with over 80,000 plugins to choose from, how do you separate the junk from the gems? Join us for a weekly, unrehearsed conversation about the latest and greatest in WordPress plugins. This is WordPress Plugins from A to Z. Well, good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, wherever you happen to be hiding out there on the globe today. Coming to you direct from the Brewery Overlook here in beautiful Victoria, British Columbia, Canada. I'm John Overall, and with me is the ever-lovely... Amber Overall. And we have a great show for you today. I don't really have anything prepared, but what the hell. This is a value for value show. And everyone, please, we look forward to you providing some value back. Don't forget, you can hang out, you know, after the show or towards the end of the show when we go into the Q&A segment, which we split in two. Half of it stays on the YouTube channel. The other half 
or half of it stays for those of you just downloading the podcast. The other half stays on the YouTube channel just for those that take it, take the time to go watch the YouTube channel version of the show. All right. With all of that being said, Amber's favorite jingle. Thank you for sharing, John. Now get down from that soapbox. It's definitely my favorite jingle. <laughs> This is number seven of 52 episodes for 2022. I don't know about everyone else out there, but I definitely can't wait for summer to come along, warm up the lakes, so I can, you know, just kick the kids out to swimming. I mean, encourage my lovely children to head outside and get some fresh air. That's what I mean. I'm sure that's what all the parents actually mean. Encourage the lovely children. <laughs> Although right now is about the time that everyone is getting a little cranky with being locked inside, hiding from the bad weather all winter long. Pretty sure everyone is pretty well looking forward to the summer coming along at this point. But remember for the, these last few months, since everyone's temperatures are starting to get a little shorter while waiting for that nice weather, remember to take some time out on your own. Find a way to get some quiet time, remove the media, remove the TV, remove all those things, and just have a hot chocolate or hot chocolate and rum. That's one of my favorite combinations. But give yourself something nice quiet time take a breather it helps a lot with with the feeling of being cooped up when it's still too cold to spend much time outside but it's starting to warm up and you can feel summer coming along that is all i have to say today <coughs> all right well let's head into the news please can everybody be quiet <coughs> please be quiet shut up thank you and now the wordpress news with john what amber <coughs> <laughs> First thing I have up here is WordPress Vulnerability Report for February 9th, 2022. So this week's report only has one plugin that they are alerting everyone to, and that is the cost calculator. For now, it seems like they're still trying to patch it, so you just need to disable it until the patch comes out. They'll let us know if, you've, if it winds up being unable to be patched. Hmm. Cool. That's it. <laughs> well, it's a good week. It is. Although this one sent in by a listener is PHP Everywhere R R has some RCW, which is RCE. code execution flaws. RCE, so, not RCW. RCE. Sorry, RCE. My bad. That was a typo. <laughs> so they have some some uh, they have some re remote. Th uh, bleh, 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 bleh. I can talk really. There are three critical remote code execution or RCE vulnerabilities. One of the three flaws can be used by subscriber level user, the other two by contribu contributor level user. The flaws give the user the ability to create arbitrary PHP code on the site and to create posts. So it may not seem like something that's, no that's really all that worrisome at first, but this can cause some serious havoc. It could. Spammers get a hold of it. They'll spam articles and pharma spam and other spam. I haven't seen pharma spam in a long time. I wonder what the big spam is now. Huh. It seems to be doxing or no. DDoSing. No, no. Pharma spam. Yeah. Pharma spam. Spam. What they'll do is if they can go create posts using this flaw, they'll create posts to use it for uh, SEO spam. Okay. That's basically what they'll do with it. <clears throat> they don't care about DDoSing you unless you're somebody big. If you're somebody small, they care about how they can use their your resources to benefit themselves. <clears throat> okay. So that is PHP Everywhere plugin. Yeah, if you have it, you might want to deactivate it. it until the patch comes out. Yeah, no kidding. And uh, I don't think I've used it in a long time, but I have seen it on different different sites. So. The next one we have for you is WordPress ramps up social learning events on full site editing. Project aims for 500 block themes in 22. 2022. Yeah. Huh. So there was actually a live online event that was hosted by WordPress. Uh, I think it was earlier this week. And what they are doing is they are actually working on trying to teach people how to use these blocks and how to develop, uh, how to use these open source tools to get their sites up and going mm -hmm. or just to fix up their sites. It's actually a pretty cool site when I looked into it and it's very popular. They almost sold out tickets within the first couple of days of making tickets available. Hmm. 
So if this is something that you want to get in on, keep an eye on it and make sure that you grab up a ticket as soon as you can. But it does seem like it's actually worth going to. Hmm. Could be. You're going you're gonna to get digging into it. You may as well start really digging into it. Next one I have is German court finds website owner for violating the GDPR by using Google hosted fonts. Oh, yeah, I saw that. Yeah, so when I first read this, I was like, well, what does that have to do with WordPress? But it, it kind of does, because GDPR is something that you want to keep an eye on, general data protection regulation. Yep. You want to know what laws are in your country, and you want to know what will happen if uh, people that are international visit your country. Like, in this case, what happened was the defendant violated the plaintiff's right to informational self-determination mm -hmm. by forwarding the dynamic IP address to Google yeah. when the plaintiff accessed the defendant's website. Yes, what that, so, mean, what that means in normal terms is that you have, you have Google fonts on your website and you're not serving them locally. What happens is every time somebody hits your web page, a call out is sent to Google to get the fonts to load onto your website and uh, Google automatically collects all the information from the visitor too that you've collected, which is the IP address and other little bits and pieces and cookies and other stuff. So, <clears throat> yeah. so this is something you wanna be aware of as a, as a site owner. Yeah, but, hmm? there's so much to be aware of as site owners now. Yeah, there's probably some pretty easy ways to get around stuff like this. Like I think if you put up a warning. Oh, you can, you can. You, well, there's, there's following the, the uh, GDPR rules by having the cookie consent. That's why you see all those buttons on the thing. We use cookies on this website. Blah blah blah. Read here to read more about the cookies we collect. What we do with them. Blah blah blah. And people have to accept that to see your site. That's one of the compliance steps for the GDPR. Then there's, um, uh, what was the other one I was just thinking about? Uh, anyway, there, there are just so many things to deal with nowadays. Indian says, just add, disable, remove <coughs> Google Fonts plugin. That's what I was talking about. Uh, Google Fonts plugin. You can host those fonts locally on your computer. There's a, a plugin to fetch down the Google Fonts and host them locally on your computer so you don't make the callouts to Google anymore. That's useful. Yeah. Okay. Next up is Gutenberg 12.5 introduces global styles variations, preserves adjacent button styling, and adds alpha transparency to color pickers. Mm. Cool. So from from what I understand, 12.5 was actually a decently heavy update. Though mm -hmm. Gutenberg users seem to be pleased with the changes for the most part. Style variations offer a little more personalization options, mm -hmm. and the idea behind the global styles variations is to allow Gutenberg to break the theme barrier and be interchangeable between themes. Hmm. Cool. Not sure if they'll manage it, but that is their goal, and that's well, kind of cool. They may eventually. Yeah. So, if you're interested, if you're a Gutenberg user, you might want to check this out and see all the different changes and the similar things that they've mm -hmm. kept. The biggest problem with Gutenberg, I'm, I'm finding out bits and pieces, is how it is uh, causing problems with, um, um, oh God, what's the name of this? Oh, the security plugin, uh, not security plugin, the security on a web server, um, something rules. Ah, it just escaped my head. Anyway, it's causing, it's causing people to get locked out of their websites and or it's causing Ooh. failures and things to happen because it's triggering the uh, mod, mod sec, mod security, security uh, setting, uh, rules. It's triggering it because it's oh, no. because uh, Gutenberg is so JavaScript heavy and it makes so many calls. They're looking like uh, false, false attacks. They're looking like attacks and uh, it's triggering these rules on websites. Preventing uh -oh. people from being able to do their, you know, preventing them from being able to post a page. They'll carefully do everything and they'll go to post it. It won't post. And sometimes they can lose all the work they've done. So, oh, man, that sucks. There, there's a lot of really craziness. And, of course, Mod ModSec is, um, is supposedly working to help deal with that issue. And it's just not working yet. And then what happens is, uh, is that... If you turn ModSec off, your website is uh, more susceptible to bot attacks and other things. Mm. 
At any rate, definitely a good thing to know. More stuff that's happening out there in the world. Uh, next is what are block patterns and how to use them in WordPress block editor in 2022. Now, I actually found this useful for me. It's written really well. Uh, it start it starts out explaining uh, like what the difference between a block pattern and a page or a block in a page builder is, mm -hmm. which I really appreciate because I've I've had an issue with uh, fully comprehending the differences because it's all just kind of the one thing that I learned how to use. I didn't really understand the difference in the names versus what they mm -hmm. are. Yeah. So this helped me to really really define the difference and it also teaches you how to you or teaches you the differences between block patterns uh reusable blocks permanent blocks all those different things so cool thought, thought this would be a useful thing to bring forward yep and the last one is just kind of a fun one nine best mechanical keyboards in their categories cheap wireless and for mac <laughs> i love uh looking at at this tech kind of stuff and there's one one of these uh brand names is i i connects i think it's got a q instead of a k so i keep wanting to say i um quinex 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 the i quinex is the uh, uh, i don't know to me it looks like quinex the i must be silent okay well i would love to get one of those keyboards because they are kind of retro looking really cool but mm. they are way out of my price range yeah, well, mechanical keyboards are always expensive, and I like mechanical keyboards. I've got a mechanical keyboard once again, and they last longer. They're more stable. They take more abuse. You can spill more shit on them. And you can fix them. And you can fix I them. Yeah, I, I, it, the one I bought came with five, uh, five keys, five, five replacement keys. Nice. So you can pop out a key and replace one if one breaks. That's awesome. Yeah, and I like them because they make the clackety clack sound like the old uh, 1996 uh, uh, IBM keyboards that were fucking damn near indestructible unless you used them to smack <laughs> someone across the head. <laughs> and even then, they were pretty indestructible. Kind of like the movie Office Space where he takes and cracks that guy across the head with a keyboard. <laughs> yeah, I really like uh, the clackety sound. That's yeah. why, why I love mechanical ones so much. Yeah, it's the it's the clackety. It kind of reminds me. I was I learned to type on a typewriter. So, <laughs> all right. Well, let's. Uh... We have some extras. <laughs> uh, my favorite extra I put first, which is North Korea hacked him, so he took down its entire internet. Yay for him! That's <laughs> yeah, a guy who has the handle P4X. I've been mm. seeing this. It, this uh, particular story all over the web lately. Mm. It's it's a very interesting and entertaining story. But mm. there's other things too, like uh, some issues with Windows 11 not allowing you to put widgets on the desktop. Mm -hmm. uh, fake uh, Mozilla fi Mozilla fixes Firefox bug, mm. and. Uh, Toshiba set to split into two companies rather than three. So just yeah. just some random technical information. Yep. Sounds good. I only good. read a few, but there's like eight different links there. So check them out. Sounds good. Now the part of the show where we like to recognize those that support the show with their time, talent, or treasure. It's time to donate to WP. Absolutely. We like to recognize those that support the show with their time, talent, and treasure. And right out the bat, we like to recognize the artists who come in each and every week with new artwork for our show. Giving our, giving our show, as we're one of the few shows out there that change the artwork each and every week. And it's all provided by you, the talented artists that support the show. This week's art comes from Angel Lemu, Koa Digital. And uh, it is a really cool classic VW that's uh, beat up and rusted and added our logos to it. And it makes it kind of look kind of cool. I do like the, uh, the little plug-in man uh, right there in the center of the VW. That's I love this picture so much. <laughs> it makes me think of all my awesome summers of camping. Yeah, well, <laughs> yeah, it's even got a skull sticker on it. Nice, it's a nice VW bug. 
Sure does. I love this this picture. I'm glad we were able to use it this week. Yeah, well, and we we've got we've got more art than we can use right now, which is really kind of cool. It's it's getting a little more challenging each and every week. I I know I haven't picked that one. It's like, and we can start picking and choosing the better ones that each and every week. It'd be <laughs> it'd be cool if we had you know. Uh, more than uh, two artists supplying at the moment. Maybe we get up to five, ten artists, and they're, they're vying each week. We might have to you know, switch the format and choose the art after the show. No, we'll never do that. We'll always choose the art before the show. It's easier. Well, I just want to say thank you to the artists. And if anybody is interested in sending in some art, the link is in the show notes. Yes, and if you haven't noticed, for the last you know a dozen or so shows, the artwork has inspired the title. Definitely. <laughs> Always, we're choosing the artwork, and that's inspiring the title of the show. So thank you very much to all our artists out there. We do also like to thank those that support the show with their treasure. And we've got a few folks out there that support us with a few bucks every week or once a month. Uh, you know, it's nef nothing significant, but it is significant to us that you feel there's some value here, that you're willing to kick us a few bucks for value. So we really greatly appreciate that. You know, if anyone decides they really want to have a lot of value to show, you can kick us $50 or more and you get yourself an executive producer credit and a note read out on the show and you can put links in that note and it will get linked to wherever you want it to go so there's a nice way to uh, create yourself an advertisement for 50 bucks too all right <clears throat> the final one is those that support this show with their time and we've had a few people do that we had Jess help us out by getting the uh, artwork all cleaned up and so like right now you can go take a look at the artwork all oh, these are all the past this is last year's artwork we need to get that changed but all the past artwork going back about three years when we started collecting artwork is now up on the show and different artists unfortunately we weren't able to put the name of the artists with the art from that time period because of a limitation of the pr of the pr of the plugin we use for the art but we did get the artwork up there for everyone to look at and see what was done in the past and uh, so Jess helped us out with that. Thank you very much. Greatly appreciate it. And of course, a big thank you for all the time Charlie gave us for the contests. And, uh, you know, if uh, you hear this, Charlie, we thank you very much. If your life changes and you want to come back and help, we're always waiting for you. All right. That wraps up all of that. It is time for us to dive into what everyone shows up here for, which is the meat and potatoes of the show into the depths of plug-in depravity. All right, classic press options. We're still holding on to this sec section of the show. It'll always be here. Um, eventually, we'll have more classic press stuff. Who knows? I may decide to get bored and go build a new site in classic press just to see how it's functioning. And But anyone out there using classic press, if you've got stuff for us, please submit it to us and we will stick it in this section of the show. This is going to be pretty much a user or listener driven section of the show. But on to WordPress plugins. What do I got? The first one I have for you this week is WordPress plugins is user verification. This is one I recently added to my own site at roguestavern.com and simply because I seem to have suddenly been discovered by these spammers. And so, of course, the spammers promptly sign up and register for dozens. I think they registered 175 accounts over the course of 12 hours on my site. Wow, that's kind of impressive. It, you no, know, that's, that's a little minor amount. I've seen them register upwards of 1,000 over 24 hours. It gets okay. it, they can be insane, the spammers. And basically, they're, they're looking for, as you discussed about the uh, plug, or not the stuff in the news earlier, um, about a subscriber being able to use the flaws in a plugin to escalate on your site. That's what they're looking for. So they come in and register on your site. And, of course, you can't stop registrations because you're running the e-commerce store. You need people to register to place their orders, etc. So this plugin here helps eliminate that problem by forcing an email verification before the account become active. Oh, and, that's useful. And it's fully free plugin that does it. I saw it first, expected to be third-party. But it turns out it's all in the plugin. It's email verification. Um, you can block certain types of usernames from being used. You can block out an entire domain 
for emails to come from because sometimes the spammers use a xyz at something dot ru and um they just make a whole bunch of emails at something dot ru you should just block that whole domain so nobody from that domain could ever register on your site so it also puts recaptcha on your forms and it works with woocommerce and paid membership pro plugin which are the exact two plugins i use on my site so it was exactly what I needed to help solve the problem. And as soon as I put that in there, the number of spam registrations dropped off to nil. Very excellent plugin. One I highly recommend if you're running a WooCommerce site or a membership site with Paid Membership Pro, recommend go check out this plugin. It works very, very well. And of course, I give it a five dragon rating. <clears throat> did you play the dragon sound? Yes, I did. Okay, I didn't hear it. Mm. Good to know that I won't hear the dragon sound. You're not yet. you're not hearing any sounds really, so. I hear some sounds. Yeah, I I I'm gonna have to tear all my wiring apart and rewire my whole my whole my whole soundboard system. Ugh, that sounds like fun. Yeah. Okay, so the first one I have today is Run Log. This one is for all the runners out there <coughs> who like to log their runs and share their activity share their success and everything. This is a totally free plugin and it comes with a bunch of options for personalizing your post. You can log the distance, duration, elevations, calorie burn, pace, speed. You can even choose light or dark style to go with your theme, add a map to show your route and even add in other gear options like tracking by shoes, which I don't fully understand that one, but I've heard about it before. I'll tell you all about it when you're done. <laughs> If you're a runner that likes to share all this stuff, then this is a great plugin for you. Uh, there's the uh, translation option of English and Hebrew. No others I can tell, but still. Hmm. Runlog seems like a pretty good plugin for runners. I rate it at five dragons. All right, well, one interesting thing, it only works with your Strava or your Garmin Connect. Okay, which is unfortunate because not everyone uses that. I I'm 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 a runner. I use my I use my um, my um, what's my run app again? Holy crap! I can't remember the name of my run app. Um, Runkeeper. I use Runkeeper. There used to be a really great plugin for Runkeeper con to connect to your site. I used it for several years before the developer abandoned it and Runkeeper changed their system. Mm -hmm. But the one thing that you should never do is you should never put maps up on your public website. You know, unless of course you run. Well, even then, you might not. You might want to reconsider your maps. You know, you should keep your maps private because you put your your public maps up, and if you run at the same time, well, that sets you up for stalking. Doesn't matter uh -huh. where. Doesn't matter where you run. Sets you up for stalking. Especially yeah, if, especially you know, if you're a good-looking girl or a good-looking guy who who are more more likely to be stalked than the average people like me, you know, could be that. But other than that, Dan, and of course, as you said, uh, place it up as you know, track your runs by shoes. Well, most runners do that because it seems once you become a runner, you tend to collect you know several different types of shoes, and they're for different types of running. And the average mileage of a shoe before you can no longer really run in it. I mean, the shoe's not worn out, but you've you've bashed the sole so bad that it no longer supports you. They only average about 500, 500 kilometers for okay. a shoe and so you want to know how many mi how much miles is left in your shoes so i track all my runs by shoes so i know how how long how long i've got left in my shoes before i have to buy new ones and of course at 170 bucks a pair of shoes you you yeah. you, you want to get the best you can out of your shoes <laughs> <laughs> Fair. all right a little more information than people need to know on that one but what the hell all right, the next plugin I've got for you. Discovered this one while doing some research on a on a prospective new client site. It's called Broken Link Checker. And at first I thought Broken Link Checker, really people are still using those. And I looked at this one, well, this one's still been kept up to date because most of them haven't been kept up to date. And a Broken Link Checker plugin is useful for your site. You shouldn't let it you shouldn't install it set it up and let it go automatic this plugin here gives you the option to set it up and have it automatically scan your site on a regular basis and give you a report this is something you should do manually preferably at a time when your site is getting the least amount of traffic because 
I still think that it probably has the problem of slowing down websites because a broken link checker goes through every post on your website, comparing every URL, and then sending out a ping on that URL to see if that's a live website still or a live link still. <clears throat> And uh, it can help you clean up junk on your sites. And the older your website is, the more you'd really want to do this just to clean it up. Because, of course, people drop domains. They change their URLs for articles. All kinds of things have happened across the web since the Internet began when I first started in this business right around 1995, 96. And when it went full-blown public in 1998, 99. So... You know, anyone who's been building, like if you have a WordPress website, like johnoverall.com is, has been there now for hmm, going on 14 years. Um, so for 14 years, I've had a word, uh, site and I've got tons of articles and links and, you know, hundreds of hundreds of that. We've got, you know, hundreds of podcasts with links going out. So it's like, I'm sure I have a shitload of broken links. And every once in a while, I get an email from someone says, hey, this link leading to my thing, would you mind changing it? It's no longer there. It's here. It's like, okay. So at any rate, really great plugin. One you might want to check out, help clean up your site. It is the Broken Link Checker, and I give it a 4 Dragon rating. That sounds awesome. Hendian said that he uses this plugin. Yep. Oh, it's a great plugin. Hmm. Next one I have is WP Trip Summary. So this is a pretty nifty plugin for those who are always going on bike trips, hiking trips, or train rides and enjoy sharing their adventures. I thought when I first saw it that it would be uh, more the ability to jot down like a road trip that you take in your own car, like say you, you travel all across your country and you wanted to make your own summary of it, but it's not quite like that. It's only for those three items, the uh, biking, hiking, or train riding. Hmm. But within those three categories, they have some pretty awesome options. They have, uh, you can add in distance, elevation, difficulty, and a map option. Uh, that's the same throughout all of them. And one of the cool things about their difficulty level is they even have a mid-eye-evil torture difficulty yep. level. <laughs> cool. This sounds about right for some hikes and runs I've gone on. <laughs> uh, there's also a map option for each topic. And, like, you can take it or leave it. Like, if you're going to do a cross-country thing, I could see you putting down a map. But Yep. Map's fine um, if it's a one-off. If, if it's a one-off trip, map is fine. Yeah. But uh, one aspect that could be either a drawback or positive, I noticed when I was playing around with it, is in the option to the plugin itself under viewer settings, you can write out a top and a bottom teaser next. <coughs> And every <coughs> single post you make will have this exact top and bottom teaser, which can be very useful if it's kind of the same thing every time, but it can also be a little irritating if you want <coughs> to have the top and bottom teaser, um, but have them um, individual for each one. Hmm. So they have the option to have it on or off. They also have the option of um, just not filling it out and leaving it blank. But if you want to have it for one thing and one thing only, it's not an option. It goes to every single post you make. Yep. Well, that's the only drawback I really saw, but it's a pretty minor drawback in my opinion. I still rate it at five dragons. Oh, cool. All right. The final one I have for you today is called Important Dates Dashboard Widget. This is nothing of a special plug-in in any real stretch of the imagination. I thought it might be more, more than what it is. But it is kind of a cool one, can be very useful. It's useful for yourself if you're the sole administrator of the site. You've got important dates of things that are coming up on the website, or maybe you want to remember some stuff if you log into your website on a daily basis doing stuff. You know, you could put important dates like such and such is due on this date. So the moment you hit the dashboard, this widget's right there, front and center, tells you it. You could use it to remember people's birthdays. If you have multiple admins, every admin will see it, and you could use it to communicate some information across to the other admins that come into the site. So there are a lot of good uses for it, but that's really all it does for you. It doesn't do that, and you have to manually enter the dates in there. You know, just put the important date name, the important date that it is, and then that's what shows up on the dashboard. Nothing overly special with it, but it does look kind of cool. It probably has lots of promise. It is a brand new plugin, and uh, who knows? 
It could evolve into something more than what it is. You might want to check it out. Could be useful for you. Go check it out. It is the Important Dates Dashboard Widget, and I give it a four. Dragon rating. Nice. Yeah, I can see this growing up into a pretty awesome plugin. Mm -hmm. uh, just wanted to mention, Hendian said that uh, he finds it really useful, and he actually gets alerts um, when an obscure, like, he, he got an alert when an obscure site went down, was able to alert the owner he hadn't noticed. So yeah. that's actually pretty cool. I didn't know it alerted you as well. Mm -hmm. Well, that's cool. Uh, last one I have for today is OS Maps. So I was really excited when I saw this plugin because maps are something that are kind of an irritating thing to try to find. And what this what this is supposed to do is it's supposed to take map tiles from either OpenStreetMap, which does not require an access key, or from Mapbox, which does require an access key. You're supposed to take these uh, map tiles and then you put in the coordinates on the on the site that they give you a link for. You put those coordinates into the plugin options um, when you're creating a new map, and then you, it gives you a short code, and then you take that short code and you put it in your post, and you're supposed to have that map show up on your post. You can only have one map showing on a post at a time, which is a drawback, but they do mention one map at a time, that's all it can handle. But unfortunately, I wasn't able to get it to work at all. Oh, that's too bad. The, the demo map worked perfectly, but even when I use the link that they give you to help you find the coordinates and everything, and I I went to OpenStreetMap and I tried and it just didn't work. I was so sad because it's such a cool looking thing. I wasn't able to reach out to them either to let them know that it's not working. Yeah, no, well, that's too bad. Yeah. So it's a really awesome idea. It didn't <clears throat> work. I rate it at two dragons. <laughs> Well, maybe they'll get back to you, give you the opportunity to re-review it. That'd be cool, because I would love to see this one actually working. Because if you could like go and get a bunch of trail maps for when you want to go camping or hiking, and have it set your hiking and camping buddies can also grab that map, mm -hmm. that'd be awesome. That would be cool. Be good for scouts, too. All right. Well, let's go talk about our contest. <clears throat> We do have a new contest this week, and of course, every once in a while, I like to acknowledge the Simple Giveaways, which uh, provides the plugin for us, the Simple Giveaways plugin. It's a really great plugin if you're looking to co uh, run any contests on your website. I've been using this plugin since it was literally brand new, and it has grown up to be such a beautiful plugin for managing your contests on your website, collecting email addresses, and all kinds of great stuff. So go check this plugin out. They do have a free version and a premium version of the plugin available. All right. Contest we have for you this week. We are giving away an Events Calendar Pro single domain license valued at 99 bucks. The Events Calendar is the premier WordPress events calendar for your website. There's so many things you can do with it. You know, they have the free version, which comes with the events tickets on it, and that allows you to set it up and do the free version. One of the drawbacks and difference between the free and the pro version is that in the free version, if you have multiple events happening on the same day, you got to do them all manually. The pro version allows you to do them all automatically and so much more. I can't even remember what it is. We just recently did an interview that was posted up with... Uh, um, I can't remember his name now. Um, James, we James Welbis from uh, the events calendar. That interview is now live up on our website too. So go check that interview out. And uh, the events calendar, great plugin, highly valuable. You want yourself a one-year free license, a uh, one-year pro license? Go enter the contest at wpplugins.com slash contests. And if you're interested more, they have more stuff available, go check them out at theeventscalendar.com. I've checked out this, this uh, plugin. It's pretty cool. Well, it's, it's installed on WP Plugins A to Z. Yeah, like I said, I've checked it out. I've gone out and I've, I've looked at it and everything. And oh. It's pretty cool. I, I use it, we use it there, and I think, I've, I think I've got one of my other copies. I pay for a three-site license, so I've got it also on the uh, Rogue's Tavern, and then I've got it on a uh, client site. 
So, at any rate, well worthwhile. All right, we need to cover up a few things here before we dive into the Q&A segment with Amber. First off, plugins I covered this week, user verification, which I gave a 5 to, the broken link checker, which I gave a 4 to, and the important dates dashboard widget, which I gave a 4 to. And I covered run log, which I rated at 5, WP trip summary, which I rated <laughs> at 5, that one always trips me up when I'm trying to uh, say the name. And OS Maps, which I rated at an unfortunate two. All right. And a few reminders and promotion bits. There is a meetup that is going to be coming this summer, and it's going to be held at the Oasis. As um, soon as I get my deck inspected and passed, I'll, I'll be holding it at the Oasis. I'll let people know on the date so they can RSVP and find out how to get to the Oasis. Um, if you'd like to be interviewed for an interview show, simply connect up with me at WPPlugins, A to Z.com slash interview and book your interview time slots. I have specific time set aside just for doing interviews. And that time is pretty much always available. If nobody books it, I do something else at the time. Not a big deal, but there are times that I know I can be available to do an interview and I set them aside and they're available on this uh, at this link here where people can book the interviews for an interview show which are separate and apart from this regular podcast and it gives people a chance to promote their plugins um, talk about their good things bad things about them all that good stuff so if you're interested check it out reach out to me all right it is time for it's question and answer time <laughs> With Amber. You know, his voice comes through really well for mm. the for the sounds. <laughs> I'm I'm just gonna have to rip the I'm gonna have to rip all my cables apart, my soundboard apart, go through I'm gonna have to remove all my sound drivers, reinstall my sound drivers and reset it all up. It's about I'm I'm about three or four hours of time that I have to carve out to do that. Oh, yeah. uh, it's the one thing I hate I about computers. That. You get everything working perfectly and then something changes for no apparent reason and you have to redo all that work again i i used to enjoy that but not so much anymore well diving into the spaghetti mess is always kind of irritating at first yeah so before i get started with the questions if anyone out there has any questions they'd like to have asked on the show send them to me at amber at wppro.ca and we will get them into the show we'll see if we can stump my dad so my first question is, SEO is a commonly tossed around need for sites, or at least that's what you read everywhere, though not many people really understand it too well even after years of dealing with it. Can you explain a little in layman's terms what SEO is and why you might need it? Yes, SEO is tossed around a lot. All right, um, in layman's terms, you know, when the internet was first created and the directories were first created. The directories were where you had to go get your link, your site approved by the directories and they would put it in there with a the description and that would be it. And they'd look them up and the original directories for the internet were basically like phone books. You had to have, you put in a name of something or a product or something you'd look for, you'd type it in, it'd give you a list of what it thought you were looking for. Sort of okay, seemed to be working all right. Then what happened was Google came along. And Google invented the links and what they called page rank. And page rank was, you know, if everybody points to this link on the internet for specific words or phrases, that link must that that link must be very important. Well, it wasn't very long after Google took charge of everything and they started to dominate everything that the uh, black hatters or the scammers realized, you know, I can make idiot be point to um, Justin Trudeau's website <laughs> you know by having hundreds of people on their websites hyperlink the word idiot to Justin Trudeau's website and their way that for that will come up as number one in the search rankings it, you, Google bombing used to be a thing it was really quite entertaining they used it a lot to uh, target uh, politicians and others that's like oh this guy's an idiot type idiot into Google oh it brings up uh, Justin Trudeau or whoever it was. That's all. That's what I got at the moment. But anyway, 
so SEO is the is this it, it was easy at the time but now it's a little more complex because people don't search for a single word like when you go to Google and you want to know something about cooking pizza do you just look up pizza no you put in pizza recipe yeah, pizza recipe. So now, you, you, and but what happens? Oh, well, I want a specific type of pizza. You'll you'll expand it out. Pizza, pizza, pizza artichoke recipe or pizza something. You, you'll expand it out. You'll get longer and longer um, mm -hmm. phrases. You'll put an entire phrase in. Now, sometimes I have to put an entire phrase in to get very specific. Yeah. Even in DuckDuckGo and everybody, they're all the same now. Mm -hmm. And. <clears throat> And the thing happens, and so SEO is learning how to write, uh, getting the content on your site to, so when the search engine index your site and read all your content and people look for it, they, they look for a pizza recipe and they list, oh, look, over here at uh, the Rogue's Tavern Recipes, they've got a recipe for pizza, you know, and they go, and that's what they bring up in the search engine. Now, the problem is you're competing with other people. You need links back from other websites that refer to you. It's a, it's a complex thing. It just goes on and on. And nowadays, like I can't do SEO anymore. I used to be able to do it once upon a time. But now to do the SEO, you have to make that your entire career. You can't do anything else but SEO because you got to understand the changes in the algorithms, changes in the keywords, how this one reacts to that, how this does that, all the, all the um, I can't remember the micro text, not micro text. There's schema, the schema markup text and everything else. There's so much there. So all I can do now is basic SEO. You install a basic SEO plugin on your website, and it gives you a good basic start from there. And from that point there, you got to spend tons of time, hours refining stuff. Although in my experience over the years I've been doing this, the best thing you can do is write your content for a human to read without trying to stuff keywords in, and you will find you get ranked very well for things. I mean, I used to be the number one ranking for emergency WordPress support. And um, that happened by accident. I wasn't even trying for it. I was just, I'd, I'd written several articles on emergency WordPress re, re, uh, uh, support. And I had written, I had, I had links to contact me if their WordPress website broke, you know, things of that nature. And that just, that skyrocketed me to the top. I was number one for like five years up until about a year ago. I was number one in that in that key phrase. So, so Hemdian has a couple of things. Mm -hmm. SEO, the internet's deepest rabbit hole. <laughs> and he said, SEO is how to optimize your site so it is seen favorably by search engine algorithms. Yep. But it's different for different search engines, and search engines keep tweaking their algorithms. Mm. So you have to keep redoing your SEO. It's yep. a moving target. Yeah. It is. That, and he explained it more succinctly than I did. Very much more succinctly than I did. And it is a moving target. And the best thing to do is don't even try to hit the target anymore. Just just write your content. It's like I still get decent hits on my um, articles that I wrote eight years ago. I haven't written articles now for about five years. I used to write a lot of articles. Mm -hmm. And I haven't written them for about five years. But all my old stuff still gets a lot of traffic on it, although it's out of date. You basically, the best thing to do is be writing content that is current, up to date, and regularly submitting that content, regularly publishing the content. And that's the other thing that is advantageous. If you're regularly submitting content in a specific field, you're not too scattered on your site, you're, very, you're focused on what you're doing, that also increases your website. The other thing that helps is by doing internal linking, linking to all the pages within your website. It's like if you if you mention, well, I have an article here, you, you link back to the article in your own website. And you link back in there, and that helps too. So, uh, Hemdian also added, having lots of links to your site from others that are reputable used to help a lot too. Yeah, I don't know if it does help as much anymore. It used to be a big thing. I remember trading links with lots of big-time sites back in the day, mm -hmm. back in the, uh, the mid-2000s. You know, in the mid 2000s to about 20, I think I, I think I quit really paying attention around 2013 was when I really just said to hell with this. I just don't have time for this shit anymore. You know, so. so my next question, you've kind of already sort of answered, which is what would one need to learn about SEO in order to use it themselves on their own site? And how would they know if they if it made a difference? 
Well, we can answer the second part. The first part is we did cover how what you need to learn on your own site. There's so much you can do. Um, but um, how do you know if it made a difference? You get an in increase in in traffic to your website, and, and not just the bot traffic, but you get an increase in people to your website. And if you've got Google Analytics or other analytics software on your site, it shows how long people spend on your website or on a page. And if people are hitting your web page and they're staying there longer than 10 seconds, longer than 30 seconds, longer than a minute, it means they're reading your content. And Ooh. because bots, they hit your site and they're gone within 10 seconds. They don't stay. Mm -hmm. They hit it, they're gone. They hit it, they're gone. But if someone's interested in your content, they hit it. And in the first 10 seconds, they're scanning the headlines to see if it's interesting. If the, if the headlines don't catch them, they're gone. If it goes from 10 to 30 seconds, that means you caught them with the headlines and maybe the first paragraph or two of text. If they're there longer than 30 seconds, upwards of five minutes, depends on how long it takes to read that content, you know you caught them. The other is, is, if the, is if you get an increase in the number of people signing up for your email list or you get an increase in the amount of sales you're making. All of those things tell you if your SEO is working. Hemdian <clears throat> uh, wanted to add, any SEO technique that gets gained subsequently gets downrated by Google. Which is every SEO technique. Yeah. Every SEO technique eventually gets gamed. Every single one since the day this started. I remember when Google went live in 1998. I think it was 98. And we all quit using, uh, God, I can't even remember the Alta Terra or so. I can't even remember the name of the old directories. The directories that never returned any useful information. And then Google came out and all of a sudden I could find what I'm looking for on the fucking internet. Oh my God. There is so much information here. It was amazing time. That was the golden era of the internet from about the 1998-99 when Google first hit until they removed the uh, Don't Be Evil from their uh, title by somewhere around 2009. You know, so we had a 10-year golden era age. It was really nice. And then it's just gone downhill from there. And they've just gotten more evil since. <laughs> but yeah. Uh, my last question for you, I'll read it out. Uh, learning about cybersecurity, I can't help but wonder, is it possible that the main reason for more cyber attacks recently is due to the lack of cybersecurity workers? It seems as though not nearly enough people are going into cybersecurity, but are instead going into web development. What are your thoughts on this? Mm, that is an interesting question. We will talk about that one after the break. And for those of you on the podcast, you want to hear about this one, you're going to have to come to YouTube. All right, I'm going to let my girl take us on out of here, and we will return. Reminders for the show. All show notes can be found at wppluginsa2z.com. And while you're there, subscribe to the newsletter for more useful information delivered directly to your inbox. WP Plugins A to Z is a show that offers honest and unbiased reviews of plugins created by developers because you support the show. <laughs> Help keep the show honest and unbiased by going to wppluginsatoz.com slash donate and set the donation level that fits your budget. Help us make the show better for you by subscribing and reviewing the show at Stitcher Radio, Google Play, and in the iTunes Store. You can also leave us a review on our Facebook page using wppluginsatoz.com slash Facebook. You can also watch the show live on YouTube, check out the screencasts, and training videos, and remember to subscribe and hit the bell to get notifications of all new videos. Follow the show on Twitter at WP Plugins A to Z. John can also be reached at his website, johnoverall.com, or email him directly, john at wppro.ca. Thanks for joining us, and have a great day. Thanks for listening to the show. This show is copyright by johnoverall.com. So until next time, have yourselves a good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, wherever you happen to be out there on the globe today. Let's go into this one here. Okay, 
you're learning about cybersecurity, you wonder if it's possible the main reason for more cyber attacks recently is due to lack of cybersecurity workers. Seems as though there's not nearly enough people going into cybersecurity, but instead going into web development. Well, my thoughts on it, I still think there's enough people going into cybersecurity. The problem with the cybersecurity now is there's more automated tools than there ever was for it. That's a problem? Yeah, for the hackers, or for when you've got the hackers with the automated tools. You know, um... <clears throat> MDN just said, I wonder if, if the number of cyber attacks is related to percentage of techies now in gig economy rather than having a regular job. Well, that could be a possible. You know, companies aren't willing to pay, you know, $200,000 a year for the really good um, uh, tech heads, you know who actually control the world. I mean, the dudes named Ben control the fucking world. They have the keys mm -hmm. to the kingdom everywhere. The dudes named Ben have the keys to the kingdom. You know, from the smallest to the largest, the dude, dudes named Ben control it all. But the big ones, the ones that, the, the dudes named Ben that work in uh, um, the main areas, you got to think about the uh, data centers. You know, you got the guys who have the access to the data centers or access to the uh, to the routers. Those are the guys that control it. But yeah, I'm, from my perspective, the increase in number of cyber attacks is due to the increase in the amount of automated tools for the cyber attacks. Okay, because I've also been seeing a lot of articles about how a lot of <clears throat> cybersecurity workers are just totally overwhelmed now because they have... They're having more and more work to do. And I've, I've been seeing all these things that are suggesting that our cybersecurity force is shrinking, but maybe it's less of the shrinking. And like you said, more automated tools. And yep. as Hemdian is saying, maybe more of them are in a gig economy now, which, by mm -hmm. the way, uh, yep. Hemdian said, regular job is white hat. Gig jobs can be white hat or black hat. Yep. Oh, that sounds about right. And... Uh, I can see that as, you know, it's like, oh, I got a job this week uh, working for IBM. Oh, next week I got a job working for the Russian mob. <laughs> you know, it's yeah. like, I don't care where my money comes from. I got to get paid. I got to eat. I got to put food on the table. You know, yeah. so it's like, yeah, it's like I can see that. I can see that being a problem. It's, it's an interesting one, and it is something I've not given much thought to. I've not really given much thought to, to, to the attacks and to... To, to all of it, you know, the part of the problem is, is that um, you also got to realize that it's become more, um, <clears throat> more economically viable to be in the black hat and to lock up somebody. I'll take the one that jumps in my head as the pipeline that they hacked and they uh, encrypted everything and waited for those thousand uh, million dollars worth of Bitcoin or whatever they'd asked. You know, it's more it's more economically viable for the black hats now to to uh, to attack something, put it in encryption because it's uh, a critical infrastructure. They have to pay. They have, yeah. they have no choice but to pay. Um, the other problem is is you got the problem of the um, um, infrastructure that is corroding and falling apart. I mean, the vast majority of the infrastructure was built up during the '70s and '80s and early 90s and then what they did as the internet came into play they just layered the internet on top of old code instead of writing new code to take advantage of it i mean the biggest thing that comes to mind for that was the <clears throat> the so-called you know why uh yk2 yk uh the two y2k bug where they had that, they had to go back and find these sixty and seventy year old dudes, uh, dudes named Ben, who still knew how to write and read Cobalt, <laughs> you know, because Cobalt hadn't been a hadn't been a working language in fifteen years. But yet, you had these banks and other places that were still running on this legacy software, and you still got the problem out there of people running on legacy software all over the place. You got big, giant institutions running on legacy software. I mean, it wasn't but a few years ago that our local hospitals uh, upgraded from Windows uh, Windows 6. Oh, jeez. You know, cause they, and, but they had locked their system down so no access to the Internet. And so it's like there's a lot of stuff out there that's like that. And 
and there's a lot of legacy code floating around. And the problem is, is the, the coders who can handle that legacy code are getting old. They're dying, retiring, and saying, fuck this shit, I'm out, just let it burn. Yeah. That's the other thing you've got too. Is you've got you've got the uh, dudes named Ben out there who are just like, yeah, they're treating me like shit. I'm the only one that keeps this shit running. Fuck it, let it burn. And they walk out. Yeah, that does seem to be an issue. Uh, Henry and have one more thing he added here. Uh, also, as more of life is going online, shopping and et shopping <clears throat> school, etc., there's more targets for hackers, making it potentially more lucrative. That is also a good point. Yeah, I I, I should have brought that point up too. There's a good there's a good example of that point because you can think about all through the late '90s into the early 2000s, where the Mac the Mac users had this. I'm better than you sort of attitude because the hackers don't come after us, you know, they don't bother us. Well, the simple fact is, is like there were, you know, I think it was a ratio of seven to one PC users versus Mac users. And it's like for the hackers, that three wasn't worth attacking, but the other seven were worth attacking, which is why Windows got attacked so much. Makes sense. You know, and so it's like, and that's the thing is, is a lot of that happens. The more targets there are, it's like WordPress. WordPress has become the major website to be attacked on the internet because it is the most used. In the beginning of WordPress, it wasn't, wasn't security wasn't an issue at all. Nobody bothered it until it started dominating. And as soon as it started dominating, that's where every, all the hackers turned their, turned their direction to because more targets, more opportunities. He's got, Henry has got more here. <clears throat> yep. Also, hacker market maturing. Less one-man hackers, more army of specialized techies, each doing only one part. For example, some make copies of legit sites, banks, etc., and sell them as templates to others who run the phishing site. Mm -hmm. Means less risk for any one hacker involved. Yep, I guess there's that too. Yeah, there's more gangs involved now. It, it's, it's become more of a business. Yeah, it really has. Like, it's kind of impressive the way that, that it's yeah. developing. Yeah, well, it's like any other business grows. It starts out as a one-man show. He, he needs to add more people to it, and he keeps adding more and more and more, and pretty soon he's a fucking conglomerate. You know, and, yeah. that, and that's what's happening out there in the hacker world, and that's what's happening in our cybersecurity world, and unfortunately, it's just going to continue on at this, and the targets will change depending on where the most money is to be made. Mm -hmm. It's all about the money in the end, as it is always. It's always about the money. I'll have to bring more questions like this that end with what are your thoughts. Yeah. Well, that was an interesting discussion. Yeah, that <laughs> one there is actually kind of interesting. And it's just, it's just the way the world works. It's, you know, 58 years of being in this world, man, you see a lot of craziness. <laughs> and also the fact that I grew up before the computer age. Well, at the very beginning, I, I, was, I was born at the very beginning of computer age. I went to school. The first computer I worked on was about the size of a, a pickup truck. I got to watch uh, all the technology change from the large computers that would, would sit, like, where the big screen was big enough for the cat to, to lay on. Yeah, the big giant monitors, CRT monitors. Yeah. Down to these flat screens I currently have in front of me mm. go from... VHS to a little, what are those little memory sticks called? The USB drives. Yep. Like, it's been very interesting just in my lifetime watching the transition from yep. big hulking VCR to tiny little DVD player. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, it's, been, it's been an interesting, it, it been an interesting ride, that's for damn sure. Yeah. So yeah, we've got a lot of craziness in the world and uh, I don't know if our, our cybersecurity is going to get any better. Um, but uh, we shall see what happens. And we are, we are so dependent upon it that anything can happen. All right. I think that will cause us a wrap. I think we're good. Mm -hmm. We'll wrap it up. It's one of our longer shows in quite some time. That's because it was a good discussion. Thanks, Hemdian, for joining in. That was yeah. awesome. Appreciate it, Hemdian. And for all of those that join in or happen to catch it later, a little bit of music to carry us on out of here. These are the days of thunder. <coughs> We're gonna make time stand still A quarter after midnight And I'm watching the wall Sometimes I feel so uptight I just can't sleep 
Alrighty, folks, that's all we got for you now. Take care. Bye-bye. Take care.